content is king. I don't yep. believe that you can produce too much content because there's all these filters and things like that. And if you put enough out there, more people will see it. Welcome to the Matt Lercy Project. This is a show about all things real estate, business, marketing, and entrepreneurship. Each show consists of myself, Matt Lercy, a member of my team, and a guest. This week, we have Catherine Halbrook. Catherine, how are we doing today? <laughs> <laughs> I've been better. Catherine. I knocked myself out with a shoe. <laughs> which, I don't know how that's possible. And, <laughs> and you decided not to pay any bills, so you got a boot on your car. So, we're, right. we're rolling didn't well. I didn't know you were going to say that on yeah. camera. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. We're ruthless here. It's real life. So, <laughs> real life talk. So, season two, F14 is interior design with Bryn Olson. And uh, Bryn is a... Uh, uh, Olson is a design group is a full service interior design firm based in Chicago and serving clients nationwide. The firm designs and renovates both residential and commercial spaces, working closely with clients to turn inspiration and imagination into reality. Bryn, thanks for coming on the show today. Thank you so much. I love seeing you guys. Yeah, um, we have uh, both have uh, very interesting and outgoing names. Us with the <laughs> Matt Lercy Group, and you with Brent Olson Design Group. So we very creative. We, we thought very hard about That's those. Right. So <laughs> when I was thinking about some things to talk about, I'm like, man, this is like literally. We we're just like, ah, let's throw a group at the end and be done That's with it. Right, yeah. straight yeah. to the point. Yeah. Yeah. memorable. Mean, it makes it easier for people to know what the name is, right? That's right. right. Absolutely. So, um, <laughs> how long have you been in design for now? Oh gosh, so you know. In interior design, I have been in it uh, professionally since uh, 2008, so uh, almost 12 years at wow. this point. Uh -huh. So, and, and how long, you've known Catherine for a little bit, right? Yes. Like a few years yeah. now. Yeah. You guys bought your place. That's right. What was that? Um, that was, Lord have Four mercy. Four years ago, I think? No, I think more. Really? So I worked for you for seven years, which is crazy. Yeah, yeah. maybe five. I think five. The, we bought the place in Lakeview in, yeah, fifth. 15, maybe? Okay. How'd you guys meet? 15, So 14. Jared was a referral from a friend of yours, I think, and I met yeah. them, but they weren't seriously looking, and then they bought a place. So nice. Yeah. Well, they're, they're, look As at this client. relationship. Yeah. Now we're on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so um, how, how did, like, uh, like design appear to you? Like, how did you be like, I want to get into, like, interior design, and, like, were you always in, like, the arts okay. and stuff like that? So this is really funny because I actually um, – so I grew up in the South. I grew up in Birmingham, Alabama, and um, everyone has a pristine, beautiful home. How people think about their home is how they get dressed in the morning. It's just wow. there's so much um, that goes and effort that goes into their homes. So I grew up around beautiful homes and didn't really realize uh, that I always wanted to do something as a career path that was highly academic um, and maybe corporate. I, I don't know. But the funny thing is I grew up as an artist. So my wow. mom is my first art teacher. Um, I actually did get paid for doing art, um, did like large scale murals. I actually worked for interior designers down in Birmingham doing faux finishing. Long story short, I say that I tripped and fell into interior design. Yeah. Um, I, after I went to Vanderbilt University, I really wanted to pursue art, art history. Um, ended up living in Scotland, that's a whole other story, oh. and then moved back home to Birmingham and was like setting my intention. Do I want to move to New York? Do I want to move to Chicago? Um, and I looked for a hot second in Dallas, and um, Chicago fit just right, and um, moved up here without a job. Um, I had worked and saved up money for a year, worked seven days a week, um, yeah. just hustle, uh, hustle bartending, yeah. waitressing, multiple shifts, um, didn't stop when I had, you know, a nice safety net to just move. I moved up here and I moved into this beautiful, beautiful brownstone. And I just found my roommates like, like willy all. nilly on Craigslist. Yeah. Okay? Yes. That's um, not weird at all. Yeah. That's right. Come full circle. <laughs> yeah. They're my best friends today. Friends what, yeah. yeah. Oh, I've been in, you know, their weddings, they were in my oh, wedding. Cool. Um, wow. so that worked out. Were they from Chicago too? Yes. Yeah. 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 And where, what That's a good find on Craigslist. It was yeah. a really good find. And yeah. the funny thing is, is through another Craigslist find, I got introduced to my husband. <laughs> Man. So Craigslist, Craigslist is like your best friend. <laughs> and then that's how we got connected with you. Because oh, yeah. we were in contact. So oh, Craigslist. my gosh. Oh, that's so So funny. this is a very long-winded um, story. If I tripped yeah. and fell because I I moved into this beautiful um, brownstone here in Lincoln, Lincoln Park, Park, so right on right. Webster. And... Um, just started, as I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my career, I 
uh, every waking hour I just spent trying to redo it because it was a little dark and dingy and I need light and bright in my right. life. And then it, I had the light bulb moment that, okay, this is something that I need to do. Um, immediately enrolled back into school and then I, had, I set my sights and I was like, I want to learn from someone who I aesthetically align with. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> I never heard of Nate Berkus um, before. Um, and I and just in my research and um, a friend of a friend basically was like introduced me to the to the firm and said he does really beautiful stuff. You need to look at, at his website and yeah. I looked at his, looked at a bunch of others, and I was like, I want to work for that person. Yeah. So I applied for the internship, told him I wanted to be the only intern, um, and they're, worked for they're a pretty big name it's crew. Oprah's, it's Oprah's guy. Yeah, it's Oprah's guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. How hard was it no to get idea. that? Um, I mean, I it doesn't hurt to have an intro to yeah. you yeah. know um, to them. So um, I just brought my entire art portfolio. Um, to the to yeah. interview, I had no experience whatsoever. Did you meet with him directly? So not for the for initial yeah. um, interviews, but um, once I got the internship, then they offered me um, a full time job, and then I was there for almost five years. Wow. Um, but but yeah, so I it was so wonderful, such and he's so wonderful. He's like the most hilarious yeah. person you'll ever meet. Um, but he, what was great is that, you know, I. He he and his like right hand um, ladies like taught me everything, yeah. um, and uh, so it was like a dual education. I had to go back to school like right. literally, but also like I knew that that internship was going to be more worthwhile yeah. for my education, yeah, yeah. which is why I they ha at the time they had two interns that would like swap days, and I was like, no, I want to be full time. Yeah. It's non paying internship, but I bartended on the side to make ends meet yeah. and. You know, you just we got to go all in, though. I mean, yeah. if you get an opportunity like that, mm -hmm. I mean, you got to take what it is, because even though if you don't get any money, I mean, the experience, I mean, it's like a college education yeah. working for something like that. that You're paying hundreds of thousand dollars a year for. Yeah. No. Yeah. You, you and don't. hands on learning yeah. from somebody like that is huge. You don't. And we like uh, we have a great intern program um, that we're so hands on. They get access to, to all of us in our firm. But it every single time when we have you know when an internship is is up, they say I had no idea this yeah. is like we don't learn this kind of stuff in yeah. school. Right. You just don't. Yeah. Um, well, so. you learn as you go. I mean, that's that's the biggest thing. You got to be hands on to really understand this stuff. So they could teach you all the stuff on. in the books, unless like you're actually there on site. Like, I mean, I pretty much failed out of school, but you know. <laughs> I, I think I think is the your learning is your college still a college? My college is I graduated from Eastern <laughs> Illinois. I didn't fail out, but I'm just saying it's not what I call it the Harvard. But of the Eastern Midwest. may be closing, right? It so could be. It could be. In Rome, <laughs> my my old dorm did close because there wasn't enough people. But my point is, is that you know sometimes you got to learn as you as you kind of get the experience, and I, I think that's the best education yeah. you could get. And so, how did you pivot from working for Nate? Um, who's uber famous and being like, you know what, I'm going to leave this guy and go start my own thing. Like, wh wh how did that even happen? Okay, so I also never, I'm such a team player, and I'm, mm -hmm. I think I'm naturally just uh, naturally a leader. I always, but I always wanted to be a part of a team, and I really never had my sight set on owning my own business. Right. Whatsoever. That wasn't in my, in my repertoire. And actually, we were, I was talking about, um, flipping and doing um, product design with them yeah. before I kind of made my decision to, to start my own thing. Um, and I love product design. That's a whole, it's a whole other beast, a whole mm -hmm. other part of your brain um, that you switch off from thinking of an entire interior to just one single piece. Um, and I, it's, you know, timing is everything. And um, I had at that point just been with my now husband for um, a year and he is an entrepreneur. Yeah. And I'd, I've never, I've never had an entrepreneur in my life, and um, just it's a different. The, our conversations are vastly different than probably most mm -hmm. couples, and um, so he kind of gave me. A, I got the like, you know, the bug, and just he has inadvertently kind of become my business mentor. Yeah. Um, but it's all about perfect timing and he being in my life at that point and having, you know, his entrepreneurial endeavors rub off on me. Made you think a little bit different. Yeah. 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 Um, again, that's another part of your brain. Yeah. That, um, but, you know, my my mom's an artist. My father's a physician. I, we didn't grow up with, like, that type of 
personality. Sure, um, like how to start a business. Yeah. You know? yeah. I always thought I had to go to business school, and I think right. that you, there's so, so many that, I mean, yes, I kind of wish I had the tools yeah. <laughs> when I started. There's a lot yeah. of mistakes that... You know, you don't know, and, and you make, and well, you what would you What and, would you say is the hardest part about that? Like, what was the hardest part to make that leap? Well, in the beginning, it's like you uh, – I got so many letters from the IRS because I didn't know I was doing things incorrectly. <laughs> you know, just filing sales tax of, yeah. of all things. Yeah, getting um, a good accountant is always big. You don't want to get <laughs> – yes. I've been audited. It's not <laughs> a fun experience. Yeah. yeah, it's terrible. So that was in the initial, the big kick in the butt because I was like um, – it's kind of scary when, when you think you're doing things right and yeah. you mean to do things right, yeah. and then you're like, oh, I'm not. Um, so, so that was a big, uh, a big eye-opener. And then really what people don't understand is that when you transition to being a business owner, it, it really does – you know, I still have my hands in everything because mm -hmm. I am right. OCD. Yeah. And, you know, thankfully my staff is as OCD like I am as well. Um, but – I, you know, most of the majority of my time is running a business. Yeah. And that's not creative. Yeah. How many um, people do you have on your staff now? So we have, um, we have two design teams. Okay. Um, so that is four people total. And then we have an office manager. Okay. Um, and then we have some part timers that come in to help us with, Got it. you know, some yeah. time billing and accounting and stuff like that. So sometimes, you know, it, it's, it's funny you said about like the creativity is that, you get so caught up in the business aspect that you kind of lose yourself creatively, you know, like where you forget. Oh, yeah. And then you got to be like, wait a second, I need a minute to breathe to be able to re-energize yes. my creative you you know, flows and stuff like that, you know? You get sucked into, like, just the the nitty, nitty gritty. And, like, I'm so thankful that I have an, an office manager, but there's still some things. You, ha you I have to touch everything. Yeah. Right. Um, someone. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. What? So, like – who were like some of your first clients? Like you made that leap, you know, you're trying to get over it. Like how did you, how were you able to get clients? Cause everybody thinks that they could start this business and like your phone's going to start ringing. You used to work for Nate. He's famous. Right. Oh my and God. No, no, no. You have to hustle. <laughs> right. But I mean, I, I know a lot yeah. of entrepreneurs out there think that like, Hey, if I work for somebody else, it's going to rub off on me, their magic. And I'm magically just going to get it and I don't have to do any work for it. Right. Yeah. So, so you're hustling here. How were you able? Like, who's your very first client you got? I mean, you, you don't have to use a name, but sure, like, sure. do you remember how you got that first client? Um, Referral will always be our strongest form of new yep. of new business. Um, no matter how much we we build the brand, um, because this is such a personal yeah. uh, personal business. But um, you guys, in the beginning, I did free shit like <laughs> you anything in order to forge those relationships, right? Um, and just to flex your muscles to say, hey, yeah. I can do this. Hey, I'm a team player. I'm gonna work super hard I did like I helped on photo shoots in the very very beginning um for like CS magazine just for free I was like just I don't need anything I just right. I'll show up and yeah. forged connections with photographers who right. then gave my name to architects mm -hmm. who then you know I styled their yeah. their photo shoots and then I connected with this um this one particular architect um, over our mutual love for an architect actually um, based out of, of Alabama. Um, but then that turned into a, an opportunity. Um, but my very first client was referral-based, um, and uh, there is one client that we, we, we do all of our stuff now completely turnkey. In the beginning, I was just like, whatever, I'll take whatever. Yeah. Right. Um, and so I still have um, one of my very first clients still – um, she's, she's been just adding on little things here and there. Um, and she's so lovely. Um, and her, I've know the family now, you right. know, I've seen the, the kids in high school now into college, out of college, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, so you've kind of grown with them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what were your biggest fears when you, when you made this leap though? So like you made this, you got your first client from referral. I mean, at, at a point, was there like, how am I going to keep getting these clients? Was there a fear of that? What's funny is I, I don't think that ever entered my mind because I had like I was like a racehorse with blinders on mm -hmm. when I was out of the gate yeah. I was like just go um, and and every put everything yeah. you can into mm -hmm. it but again build build those relationships yeah. okay. and kind of have a faith in the universe that if this is meant to be th things will work out at the end of the day I always say okay if this really doesn't work out for me I'm gonna be I can be a cab driver I'm actually really great driver. A cab okay. driver. I'm a terrifying driver, but I get there on time. Yeah, I mean, I mean, and now they have Uber and stuff like, like that. Yeah, you know? right? Yeah. So if it doesn't work out, I'd be an Uber yeah. driver, or I can always be a barista at Starbucks. 
I'm not the biggest <laughs> fear that failure beyond failure that you I, can't feed yourself. yourself. Yeah. I'll like, tell you, I would love to be, I always tell people if I failed at this, I would be a Walmart greeter. I think I'd crush <laughs> you it in the Walmart. I feel like I'd crush in the Walmart greeter. <laughs> you know, like, really I would great. love, I'd be like, those are great shoes. <laughs> Aisle seven, we'll see you later. You know, <laughs> you know I, I don't know, I feel good about it. So, all right, so you, you started the group. What, what type of clients now are you guys working with? Because you said you kind of pivoted a little bit. You started taking on everything, and now you're kind of being a little bit more selective? Or? Yeah, yeah. We are so super lucky to, to now um, – you know, I wanted the, the firm to get to a to sweet spot where I am a part of every single project. Um, we are in a great spot with two design teams. Um, I don't think I really ever want to be too crazy big um, yeah. um, because – like I said, this is this this particular business is about relationships sure. because it is when when people are interviewing be interviewing you and and you know we're able to now interview people back to make sure they're a good fit. You this is like a long term relationship yeah. that you're entering in with people. Um, What's a good question you ask? Them? What's the main question you ask every person when you do these interviews? <laughs> well, it's funny. Like I usually in a first call, we have multiple calls before a, a, I write up a scope and a contract, but um, you know I. You know, I just ask them about their their uh, you know what their end goals are for yeah. this home. I mean, the first yeah. thing that you want to know is this a forever home or is yeah. this a stepping stone home? Um, yeah. Because that definitely changes people's mindset on how they approach yeah. the yeah. home. Yeah. Um, but just that early on, you can just tell in five minutes, yeah. like, just yeah, just from talking to people. Um, and we had this conversation prior mm -hmm. that we just what regardless of what type of project comes our way, we truly just want to work with really great people yeah. because yeah. the experience yeah. and us like coming to work every day to just work our ass off for yeah. these these people, no matter how big or small the project is. Um, well, you said before this worthwhile. that you, you like to work with nice people, which yeah. I think is funny because like I, I would love to work <laughs> with a lot of yeah. nice people. I would say most of my clients are nice, but I get yelled at. I 85% of my day, uh, <laughs> and I've just become immune to it. I have such thick sure. skin now. Now people are like, well, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to yell you so bad. I was like, oh, you yelled at oh, I didn't, I didn't even yeah. My brain didn't yeah. even kick in that I just yes. got degraded for fucking <laughs> the last 45 minutes. Yeah. So uh, it's different types of business, yeah. but yeah. I mean, it's still personal, like you said, because it's their home, and people take their home really personally. Totally. You know, you said you interviewed for these projects. Like, is there a general scope, like, of a price point, that, like, how much – X pro like you average at least X a project like fifty thousand, ten thousand. Like, is there a price point? Or sure, you, that's you a great question. Saying that, by the way. Yeah, listen, this is. I think what is lacking out out there is a is the transparency of truly how much things cost yeah. in our industry. Yeah. The, the, it's not there. I don't know why HGTV doesn't really talk about the real pricing right. For, right. for things. Um, it's $25 to do this entire place. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, no kidding. Yeah. I can totally make my place right. look like that. Yeah. Um, so to answer your first question, which I just realized I didn't, we have we take on scopes of um, just a couple rooms that need to be refreshed all the way to complete new construction like we have clients in florida and san francisco wow. um we've had clients in new york um do you always travel to the properties yes yeah. yep do they pay you to travel they sure do first class <laughs> <laughs> um i'm getting there okay <laughs> right okay. um when i worked at nates yes it was first class always um but uh but uh facetime is has totally yeah. like yeah when i there was no facetime when i was at nate right nate Berkus. Yeah. Um, she was paging people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like on a Asia flip phone, like T9ing them. Like, yeah. One flip phone, the other yeah, phone. Yeah. Um, but so, so those are, we, we'd like to have a, a nice mix um, because, you know, we'll never put our nose up at something that we think is too small because everyone has different needs at different times. Yeah. Those ones that are smaller, they'll come back to us yeah, for their full home. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we do have a minimum now of, um, you know, of three uh, three rooms is okay. kind of our minimum. And so in talking about how much things cost, I always say, I just want want to educate, you know, people when, when I'm on the phone with them, actually in the, in the interview, yeah. like they'll ask, you know, how much things cost. And I always love to say, listen, if you didn't hire an interior designer and you just walked into, um, you know, now you can go to Restoration Hardware, you can yeah. go to Pottery Barn. I don't know if West Elm has these services. Um, but you can go to them for free design services. Well, they'll even do space planning. I have to say we've gotten many clients from those services <laughs> because um, they're wonderful yeah. for that product. Yeah. But it, And if you want to fill your entire home with just retail, that's, that's great for them. That's why people don't really come to us, though. People want something that's truly bespoke yeah. you know, right. for them. 
Um, and and we're not afraid of dabbling with using retail and yeah, mixing right. in custom or an antique or vintage piece. Right. Um, but so I say, if you go to, go, let's say Pottery Barn, because I kind of feel like Pottery Barn, si- they're pretty average. Like West Elm has l- some things that are a little bit less expensive. Restoration, of course, has things now that are that rival a merchandise mart, yeah. like right. $12,000 mm-hmm. dining tables. But so I say... Go into go into Pottery Barn, and let's say you're going to furnish your family room. Mm-hmm. Now, what people don't realize is what goes into a family room. You've got a sofa, probably a pair of chairs, your coffee table, um, and your side tables. Okay, so you've got mm-hmm. some some things already going on there. But then you've got your rug, your rug pad. You've got all of your window treatments, yeah. which are individually you have to buy rods, um, end caps, rod rings, um, and then the drapery panels and the drapery liners. Yep. Right. So you can buy all that stuff retail. Then you've got all the art that goes on the wall. Then you've got all the lighting, chandelier. You've got you know floor lamps, table lamps, consoles, media stands that go under I feel everything. Like I don't want to do that. Um, <laughs> yeah, you do. It. Then keep yeah. on going. You've got accessories. Yeah. You're filling in yeah. everything. I'm okay? overwhelmed. <laughs> so then on top of that, you have sales tax. You have right. freight. Right. So I. And I've done, I tell people, just to whip out your Excel spreadsheet and keep on adding all these things in. Um, even when you, I'll tell you, accessories, if you go to Pottery Barn and buy all your accessories from there for one room, let's say that has a lot of shelves, you're looking at around spending $3,000 just there for just accessories. Mm-hmm. Altogether, everything that I just said that adds up, you're looking at somewhere between twenty dollars to $30,000 just for that room. You didn't hire an interior designer and you bought everything direct to consumer. Yeah. And you have to do all <laughs> and you do all the work, you do all the project management, right. you get it all installed, you deal when things come in damage because everything comes in damage, um, right. at least at, at some point. Right, right. So, um, so, you know, just the cost of goods is like for a family. Now, of course, if you go down to a dining room, you don't necessarily have as much sure. seating or, or whatnot. Um, so that can maybe, you know, edge down to maybe 15 to 20, you know, something like that. Right. So um, <clears throat> those are the... the costs that people don't necessarily understand mm-hmm. um and yeah so so and hopefully that gives you a yeah. little bit of insight no, that makes sense what percentage of your clients would you say just let you completely do your own thing to like wanting to be involved so w- how i created my process is we we actually require people to be involved okay. um because it's well well Almost all of our clients are very busy working individuals. They run businesses. They right. they run law firms. They um, and and then they have significant others that also do that, or their full time parent, which is like two jobs in one. And yeah. so they just they understand that time is money, and and that's what they're investing with us. Um, so everyone has to give over a good amount of trust, no matter what, because how we run our firm is we like to be as efficient as yeah. possible with people's right. billables. So we're not running around and shopping in person. Yeah. We've got huge catalogs digitally online. Um, we, you know, I train my staff that like on the drop of a hat, they like can, if I say, oh, we need a chandelier that's of this price point and it's got to f- have this feel, like we are constantly learning our resources mm-hmm. so we can know it at the drop of a hat. Um, so what we require our clients to be involved with is in the very beginning because every single one of our projects, we get inspiration from our clients. Mm-hmm. So like kind of like they're showing you like, hey, yeah. here's what I like. And, and they don't even have to show back. us. Yeah. And so we like have a lot of clients that are like, I don't have time to pull inspiration. I'm like, that's totally cool. Yeah. I already have talked to them verbally about what they like. Yeah. But you can't solidify really what that means until you look at a picture and describe the picture yeah. I describe this like it seems like, you know, like when you go, well, I've never been, I, I've never been to a therapist session. When you see it on TV yes. where they show the ink blocks, <laughs> you know, and you're like, you know, <laughs> yes. tell me what it, it means. Yes. So I'm, in yeah. my head, I always think like you, you sit down on an interior designer and like, is this you? Is this you? Is this you? <laughs> is this you? And you're like this, 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 this. And they're like, and then like finally you, you yeah. get them back and yes. like, okay. Here's what I could get off this. Is yes. that kind of how it is? So yeah, we That's how fucked up my brain very, is, you know? Our very so. first meeting that we yeah. we call it a first date. It's okay. like we it's almost like it's called a visualization presentation yeah. in the industry. But and a lot of people usually have a visualization internally. We have it with our clients. Yeah. Um, I have to know, I can't do my job to the best of my ability unless I know and know and know absolutely if you're allergic to f- certain fabrics, what you what you what color you hate no matter what. Yeah. Like that I can't change your mind. Yeah. Um uh, what like experiences experiences you've had in the past? Like, what type of furniture you grow up with? 
We also like to talk about in that first meeting what people's daily routines are. I want to know what they do right when they wake up in the morning, yeah. like what the routines are before they go to bed, what their kids' routines are, like, yeah. and actually yeah. what routines are actually not working for them and yeah. how we can actually space plan and rework things. Mm -hmm. um, because that is, this is like my soapbox that people don't really talk about. People don't understand that interior design is all around them and the experience they have when they walk into a restaurant, when they walk into an office building, when they walk into their own home, the first thing that they feel um, is a direct result of what is surrounding them and right. that's from an interior designer. Um, go one step further, how, how someone's home is set up, how an office is set up. Um, can make an office dramatically more efficient or less efficient. Right. Um, I have had people call me and say, um, you know, after you came in and redid this whatever to my kitchen, um, my husband and I fight less and our kids, like, yeah. are not acting up. Yeah. So we actually have the power yeah. to really impact people on a very different level beyond aesthetics. And no one talks about this, but it is quite powerful because interior design is all around us in all facets. Yeah. Well, life. I mean, it's your home. So it's kind of like where you, you know, somebody actually said this to me last night, a client, and he said, like, you know, I want to feel like I'm home when I walk in there. Yes, you know? yes. And, you know, the way you decorate is a big way. Yes. Because I'll tell you right now, there's a lot of properties we sell mm -hmm. where they are amazing. And then when all the shit gets out of there, people walk in and they're like, is this mm -hmm. the same place yeah. I'm like yeah you just have to rebuy all that shit you know yeah. so, like, uh -huh. yeah. like how much is that gonna be about like, <laughs> <laughs> we'll yeah. refer back to this podcast yeah. and yeah. do the yeah. Yeah. here's the thing Potter. so um you know how about has have you ever done a job and somebody's hated it um no thank god but th that's just the curious. reason we why. still play people places where like yeah. it's called me later and said we made a mistake i'm just yeah. curious if it's yeah. ever happened you know so like I said, when, when we start a process um, with a client, they're really entering into a relationship. And so yeah. we start with a first date. And yeah. then from there, we have a lot of touch points and yeah. touch points of, that's right, we present space planning after that. Then we actually delve really deep into budgets. Um, and then by the time we get to me actually starting to, my, me and my team starting to design, we already know what they love and hate. We already know how they want to function in the space and what type right. of furniture is in the space and how much they want to spend so that we go, can go to town. So we have spent a lot of time already with them in the in the pre-design phase, really understanding what they want and what they need. Um, and that is how I've set up. That's not necessarily how we did it at Nate Burkus, but that's kind of what I've mm -hmm. created and tweaked in my own process. Um, so you got to put I your own spin on it, though. You yeah. have to. And that's to. what it is. What you're comfortable so with. So wh right. what about, so you, like, you know, because this is a big uh, question that our clients ask us all the time. Like, what would you say the average for, let's say, an entry-level like interior designer and like a full blown design. Would you say like you need it to be at least at sixty thousand for an entry level and like two hundred thousand for a full blown design? Like what's what's good yeah. price points that we can even tell people mm -hmm. uh, on average that they can expect? You know. So, so it's 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 all about how you define entry, mid tier, and and whatnot. So, you know, there are those design services out there. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, what are they called? Like. Uh, the the ones where you can just get a room for three hundred mm -hmm. done for three hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh my gosh, why am I blanking? No, I know. What I know what you're talking about. Like yeah. we understand that's not like we're yeah. like we're talking like a true interior. I mean, there's gotta be like an average like interior designers charge like like okay like halfway it's sixty. We do a full one like just basic shit's gonna cost you at least a hundred grand. You yeah. Know, like I don't know what it is. I'm just so curious. what the one thing that is a, is a little difficult with you know if you go to see a lawyer you know you're gonna get charged. By, by the six minute hour twenty thousand yeah. dollars an hour yes <laughs> and everyone attorneys. everyone charges by yeah. uh, uh, by time billing and they just have whatever their hourly rate is and that's it yeah so in our in our um, industry it is it is quite different we charge a billable hour as well as a commission yeah. um, we keep our billable hours to a very competitive mm -hmm. rate because yeah. we're able to have that commission component yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, so people always ask, well, why would you double dip? It's definitely not double dipping. Yeah. I would not be able to stay in business if I was just billable sure. hours. I would be able to if I raised my rates like 3x. Yeah. Right. But um, the whole point of commission is that, just as a side note, our clients are never paying um, over MSRP. Um, they're actually usually getting a discount because yeah. we're giving our wholesale and putting the commission on top right. of that. 
Um, and if our commission is would exceed it, we would just price match. Got it. So it's a win-win for everyone. Right. So I can keep my hours low enough. They're still getting great deals yeah. On, yeah. on furniture. So that is how we structure our fees. Um, and that's how most interior designers yeah. do. Yeah. There are other interior designers I know that their fee is um, a certain dollar per square foot. Yeah. Um, now that I think is kind of tricky because what if you get into the project and all of a sudden the project like expands or contracts or someone wants to sever a contract and yeah. you're like how do you even know how much fee is due to you because how do you yeah. calculate like how much you've done? Well, well the main um, thing is that it seems like you've got a method that works mm -hmm. and makes yeah. sense and that your clients are happy with. Yeah. Which yeah. is which is probably like a, a troublesome thing for the business in general because interior designing to me is like it's kind of like real estate in the sense that like I, and I don't mean this in a, in a bad way but like I meet so many people who say they're interior designers mm -hmm. it's just like <coughs> if I walk out the street right here I'm gonna run into at least 50 brokers uh, but that <laughs> yeah. doesn't mean they're actually doing any business yes. you know what I mean yes. so it's, uh, so it's kind of like the same way that are also interior designers now too that's another oh, one yeah. yeah that's a big one I'm an, I, double dipping. I, I'll, I'll, I'll be on, a, on a, a listing interview and they'll be like oh yeah well the last broker was an interior designer and a real estate broker I'm like yeah. okay like yeah. like you know it, it's it's like it drives me crazy which I'm sure it drives you nuts well, too well it's the one thing that I can really truly express is how many clients we do get from working with people that are not trained professionally totally that because they've then they've spent all this money on stuff and they get into the home. They're like, well, this doesn't even fit. I'm like, well, you didn't work with someone that's trained yeah. in space planning and knows how to. Yep. Um, so there is a huge difference between a decorator and yeah. a designer. I mean, I so, can't say that enough. I yeah. always tell people that like, and this is what I always tell those people is like, you, if you're really good at something, you can't be really good at something else like yeah. that too. Like, you know what I mean? Like if you spend all your energy on being the best salesman in the world, I'll tell you right now, I suck in interior design. If anybody ever asks me, like, <laughs> what color should I paint these walls? I'd be like, I have no, I have a stager that'll come in here and give you some good yes. recommendations. Yeah. But my best job is not being like, this is how we decorate a house. Yes. Like, yes. I'm yes. great at sales. Yes. I'm not great at decorating. Yeah. I'll be the first one to admit it. I don't think that's a bad thing either. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> totally. You may not be the greatest, well, you got to be in somewhat sales, but you may not be the greatest at selling houses, but you're great at doing design. You know, yeah. I tell people, like, you got to figure out which one your strengths are and what your weaknesses That's right. are yeah. and play I, to them, you know? I mean, if you do it right, you do end up – I mean, it, it can feel like quite an expense, but it's almost an insurance policy of being able to do it right the first time so you're not having to redo stuff you've already paid for. Yeah. So um, it kills me when we have people that come to me and say they have a, they've had a terrible experience because – Actually, the majority of what we want to do and what I, what my team and I talk about is that, yeah, we know that we're like, we all hustle. We're really, yeah. really good. Right. We're going to deliver the best product for our individual clients, but we want to make sure the experience is good. Yeah. So if the experience sucks and the client is, con you know, we've how we do our thing is our clients should be as involved as needed and they don't have to deal with any of the headaches of everything else. Yeah. Like. By the time we install, yeah. I have placed a very specific flower in every single vase. Yeah. Like, I'm crazy yeah. methodical about. Yeah. So everything is done for them when they come in. Yeah. So to answer, to come back to answer your question, um, you know, if, if you were to just have one room that you need to do completely, sure. completely done, um, and you want to work with, uh, you know, someone and just, like, fees alone, I would say you're probably going to spend, and the more rooms you do, the yeah probably the more money you save because yeah. when you're already designing one room, you're already thinking of resources for other sure. rooms. So it does yeah. go down. But I would say like for one room, you're looking at about 15 grand for a fee for someone to just do, do mm -hmm. one room, like yeah. well soup yeah. to nuts. Um, and I would say like a full blown, um, you know, a full blown home where it's, it's, it's different if you're just doing um, finishes and no furniture, mm -hmm. that's going to be a certain fee. If you're doing finishes and furniture, that's, you know, double the work. Yeah. Um, and then flipping around, if you had to have no finishes to do, and finishes, just to clarify, means anything when you shake is not going to come off the walls. So tile work, bathrooms, yeah. kitchens, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, I would say... I would say on average, I mean, for the cream of the crop, you could pay up to like a million, you know, half million to million. Um, and I would say like a really good estimate for 
um, hiring someone to do your full your full job, you're going to be somewhere between the two fifty and five hundred yeah. um, for like a, a big home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Honestly, it makes a big difference yeah. though because like when we walk into uh, some of these places, and it's done up like amazing. Like yeah. people are like, "Man, this is sick." Well, I'll you tell know. you from a selling standpoint, from real estate, um, we were really lucky a couple years ago to connect with a home builder um, and an architect out in Hinsdale. And the point of this home was it was the builder's dream home. Yeah. Everything that her clients wouldn't let her do, she mm -hmm. wanted to do in this home because this was her home. It was almost like a spec home, but it was a very specialty spec home. Um, and she brought me in to, um, to fill the interiors to put it on the market. So not so staging, yes, but you know, I'm not going to stage that shit. Right. I'm going to do it right. very well. Right. And um, we were lucky enough to partner with some people who were who would allow us to, you know, uh, take things out on loan. We did mm -hmm. have to buy some things. I did make some things custom, yeah. right. and, you know, just yeah. Were you nervous so the I wasn't. No, because, you know, <laughs> you get showers yeah. all the time. Like, like the one yeah, guy that's like, like, I can't afford yeah, this yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. but this is the yeah. one, one thing. As OCD as I am, things happen and life yeah. happens, and we see our stuff stained and yeah. whatnot, you know. Right. And, and, but, but you know what? It's There's always a solution yeah, for it. everything. Mm -hmm. So it's what? I'd have to reupholster if it didn't come out. You yeah. know, I've got some great vendors um, that I work for, yeah. like, taking out stains. So, right. yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't too worried. Um, and they had four great parties um, before the this place went on the market, and they had seven offers off market. Wow! Um, so it makes a difference. Oh, and absolutely. Got, she got full price, I believe. So wow. did they buy your furniture with it? Um, and then the the client they hired did. us and <laughs> bought the furniture. Win win win. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Three wins for everybody. Yes, yeah. it was it was wonderful because the the client was moving uh, her family down um, from New York and. Um, it, it didn't feel necessarily 100% yeah. like her, but she loved the direction. Yeah. So she she basically hired us to take inventory of all of her stuff yeah. up there, see what she likes, then talk about the things that here. she liked yeah. here, and then we had to we merged the two. Yeah. Very cool. nice. um, so that was a really fun one. So where do you see the future of you guys' company going from here? So, um, you know, my gosh, the, the future, you just absolutely, <clears throat> you just never know. What I would love to see in the future is most definitely um, – we just want to continue to build the brand. Yeah. Um, we'd love to get into product um, and uh, lifestyle product and whatnot. Um, but but for now, we're really focusing on um, a more specific um, client so we can flex our yeah. muscles mm -hmm. a little bit more in terms of creativity. Yeah, yeah that's um, awesome. So. so we have what we call the Fast Five, where the co-host, Ms. Halbrook here, asks that's you me. five Questions. Okay. <laughs> Catherine, what we got here? All right. First question. Um, what is the best piece of advice that you've ever that you ever received? In in life or in ge yeah, yeah, anything, yeah. in general. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh, I have so many. I will say <laughs> this is gonna sound funny. Um, when I got into the real world, um, <laughs> I've always been like super perfectionist, straight A student, whatnot. And when I started my own business, really, mm -hmm. um, a piece of advice I got was that um, that the average is C is a C for a reason, and that really resonated with me because yeah. no one put the put the pressure on me except for myself. Yeah, right. and for me, the C was never in my repertoire. It was yeah. always always an A, um, and so it has kind of helped me. Not not that you want to keep expect expectations low of people, but <laughs> um, it really it really does put uh, some things into perspective when mm -hmm. we're dealing with with yeah. trying to get things done or yeah. a house properly, you know, built or, yeah. you know, just dealing with, with certain types of, of subs that it's like, it was a, it was a kind of a wake up call for me to be like, like, okay, just, you don't you need to be yeah. so, you know, like you can everyone it. is doing yeah. exactly, you know, but C is an average for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Um, okay. This is Matt's favorite question. It is. Do you love to win or do you hate to lose? Oh yeah, this is a really, this is really, this is really intense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I would say that I, sorry, I'm not very lightning fast on my answers. Um, I hate to lose. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's already. That's what I feel yeah. too. I hate you to know? Lose. Yeah. Uh, next question: Who is your biggest hero? Oh goodness. Oh my goodness. So this is going to sound like really 
this is gonna sound really cheesy, but um, I think I don't. I'm not gonna necessarily name. I don't have like one yeah. person to necessarily name, but I would say the the people that have um, have elevated themselves um, with what they do with their everyday life to also be able to touch humanity in a certain way because there's so much yeah. so much real life and crap that's going on yeah. when people are actually doing their hustle but also yeah. you know giving the, giving a side hustle to just trying to make a difference yeah. and give um, back yeah. give back and that's something that that our firm is really yeah. like we've been hustling so hard that now like we know we need to shift and like start right. to do a little bit more yeah. outreach i think yeah. that those are kind of like it, there's it's an everyday unsung hero Absolutely. just yeah. being yeah. kind yeah. Yeah. like that answer yeah good answer um, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Oh, I really should have prepped. Um, uh, oh, gosh. I mean, I would really love, I would say more than not, I would I would love to turn back time sometimes. Yeah. Um, time travel. That's a good one. Yeah. Time travel. Yeah. yeah. Yes, actually, thinking one. about that, I'm a history nerd, <laughs> so, so I would I. really... Yeah, I'd like to go back yeah. and see what's up, yeah. you know Yes. I, mean? I also do, I always <laughs> fantasize really about, excited about yeah. it. I was like going like way back to medieval times yes. and trying some of that wine, because they're always sitting, <laughs> they always got these mugs on the table, and I'm always like, are those things Is any good or not? really right? good? <laughs> Honestly, though, like every movie you ever see, they got these jugs, oh, and everybody's funny. just like morning, they wake up, they pour, and like, fuck, that's got to be yes. unbelievable if that's the first thing they're taking yes. in, you know? Yes, time travel. Anyways, go ahead. Sorry. Last question, what makes you Chicago? Being from Alabama. <laughs> Being from Alabama. Okay, this this is I will say Chicago is in my is is in my blood. It's in my um, it's definitely in my blood. So even though I grew up, um, we moved to Alabama when I was three, mm -hmm. um, and I was raised in the South and stayed you know there until we moved here, um, thir 12 and a half, 13 years ago. Um, however, my Italian family uh, side of my family immigrated mm -hmm. yeah. and went came straight to Chicago. So my oh. parents are actually both from Chicago. They met in Chicago. No um, and so my roots grandmother, my roots definitely are here. Um, my grandmother was an, also an interior designer uh, no in kidding. Chicago. Oh, cool. So, um, so basically, Chicago is is definitely in my blood. Yeah. You know, I had, you know, I'm infused with the South. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Did you guys come up, um, like growing up, did you guys come up here and visit uh, a lot? We yeah. would pile in the big <laughs> ass station wagon, the Oldsmobile, oh, yeah. and we would drive 12 hours, stop in Chicago. Yeah. Um, my grandmother grew up in Park, or was, my mother grew up in Park Ridge. Okay. So, um, we was would hang out. Was it the station wagon with the, like the, the wood paneling? Yeah, with the wood paneling. Yes. <laughs> and I always got the way, way back. So, yeah, I was Clark the kid. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, so where can people find you and what would you want to plug? Oh, um, where can people find me? Well, unfortunately, I'm always working, but you can find me on 1000 North Halstead. <laughs> okay. We actually just moved in um, a year ago into our beautiful space, and we put ourselves last, so it's not completely finished, but we're hoping the end of this year we'll have all of our awesome. build out completely cool. done. Um, cool. But we are always there. <laughs> nice. So make sure to tune into our next episode and subscribe to our podcast. Thanks for listening to the Matt Literacy Project. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast, follow us on Instagram, and like us on Facebook. 